How do you expect a teacher to teach in a school where there is no swimming pool? Do you expect the teacher to go and teach them in the river or where? Yeah. Yeah. It's, some counties actually don't even have a swimming pool. The whole county does not even have a single well, swimming true. pool. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, viewers, from wherever you're watching us from. It's your host here at Wima Sports, Jermaine Odiambo. And uh, this show has been powered by Osoita Lodge, indeed, where guests become family. Uh, speaking of guests, today we've been hosted by an amazing, amazing person who has seen sports growing the, over, over the couple of years. Uh, he's been through a couple of sports, but he found home to one and only sport that you shall get to know as we continue. And uh, without further ado, this is, you know, the president of Softball Federation of Kenya and uh, Baseball 5, he has steered Baseball 5. Uh, Kenya national team uh, towards victory, and we are ranked eighth in the world. Tuko juna USA ata USA wa tuoni, and uh, he's also the secretary general of Africa World Baseball and Softball Confederation. None other than Mr. Francis Karugu. Karibu sana sa. Uh, Asante sana. Yes. Mm -hmm. And uh, just to uh, break the ice, what 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 do you do out of sports? <laughs> uh, my life is just about sports and nothing else. Yes. So I drink uh, sports, I eat sports, I sleep sports. Well, nothing else. How mm. how did you first get into sports? Uh, we got into sports through training. Mm. So I went to Kenyatta University where I trained in sports. Mm -hmm. Initially, I was doing geography and physical education. Mm -hmm. But at that year, I specialized in sports. Only. We call it double PE or double physical education. Mm -hmm. So after that, I was posted to teach in colleges. Yes. Yeah, where we teach all sports, as you said. Yes. So actually, my training in is in all sports. All sports. Mm. So, so did you ever play any sports growing up? Growing up, I was playing basically soccer, like all young boys. The other sport I was playing was volleyball. Yes. And basically, I was playing volleyball in the church. Yes. Yeah, within the youth groups. Uh -huh. Yes. And and what what can you say? You know that sports has really impacted your life in a way that uh, uh, nothing else could have. Yeah, sports it has really worked miracles for me. Because I've traveled all over the world. Yes. Compared to my friends who did other courses like uh, Kiswahili, Sierra, and others. Yes. For me, it has taken me all over the world. Sorry, I think I've been into all the continents in the world. Wow. Yeah. Wow. So to me, sports is a thing. I never regretted joining sports. Definitely. Mm. And uh, having traveled all the world, uh, you've been exposed to different sports disciplines and uh, mm. developments. Uh, what can you say about sports development in Kenya so far over the years? Uh, sports development. Of course, in Kenya, we have uh, challenges, many challenges. Compared, you know, you can only talk about it comparing with the rest of the world. Yes. So Kenya, we are is moving on, but slowly. Mm. The reason being, one is the facilities. Our facilities are still low, they are still below par compared to other parts of the world. The other thing is the equipment. When that some sports like softball do not have enough equipment. When our sports houses do not have enough equipment, especially for a sports like uh, softball. Yeah. So the, the, you see the sports houses only stock popular sports, uh, equipment for popular sports like volleyball, mm -hmm. soccer, and probably hockey. Yes. But all the other sports, especially the ones which have been introduced in the CMDC curriculum, the equipment are not there. Mm. So we are developing, but uh, very, slowly. very slowly. We need to move faster. Yes. Because sports is a big industry. So how, how best can we improve in these areas that you're facing challenges? Yeah, the only way is for the government to come in, especially in the area of infrastructure. Mm -hmm. So you can imagine soft boys in the schools and they don't have bats, they don't have balls, mm -hmm. they don't have helmets, they don't have the fields. Mm -hmm. So how are they going to teach? How are the teachers going to teach? Mm -hmm. Look at even a spot like uh, swimming, for example. Yes. Yes, they're swimming in the curriculum. How do you expect a teacher to teach in a school where there is no swimming pool? Do you expect the teacher to go and teach them in the river or where? Yeah. Yeah. It's, some counties actually don't even have a swimming pool. The whole county does not even have a single well, swimming true. pool. True. So, and we have like 50 schools or so. So, yeah. how are they going to learn? Yeah, I was seeing some clips in the social media where teachers were laying a plastic paper on the ground. 
and children was trying to swim, you know, showing the strokes on the people. Yeah. Yes, yeah, as they and the teachers were awarding marks, grading. <laughs> that is pathetic. So it government is. has to come in strongly. Yes. Probably build um, a facility in every area, mm. maybe every location or ward or something like that. Yes. County governments also need to come in and supplement. Yeah. yeah. Mm. So that we have at least in I went in Canada in twenty sixteen. And I could see sports facilities are managed by the county government. Oh, yeah. So nice. they, they have a, an area where we have all types of sports, softball, rugby, soccer, definitely mm -hmm. within an area. And those facilities are managed by the, the county, county government, government and they are done, managed very well, very professionally. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So if you want to do your sports, you go to that area, probably you pay something. Yeah, they can also host probably international events because they are very well managed. Yeah. So that's the way to go for Kenya. It's the we are come up with an area, maybe every county, an area where we have all facilities very well managed by government. Yeah. And then they employ people who know how to manage facilities. Mm. So that way, you know, kids can grow up, you know, playing with, within those very nice facilities. Yeah. Mm. So um, over the years then came softball and baseball. So um, how, how did you get into this? So softball. For, I was teaching in uh, colleges. I started in Tambach Teachers Colleges in Nan Ta College in 1997. Mm -hmm. Then in 2001, I moved to Irish Teachers College. Mm -hmm. So when I was there, a friend of mine, a classmate of mine, mm -hmm. who had been posted to Shanzu teacher, Teachers College called, uh, what is his name, Nyonje. Mm -hmm. He's now Professor Nyonje. He teaches in the uh, University of Nairobi. He was the chair of a softball in Mombasa, so mm. he was posted to Irish. Mm. So when he came there, he introduced me to softball. How did he introduce me to softball? There was a team in 2005 which mm. was preparing to go for Olympic qualifiers. Olympic qualifiers at that time were in where? I think Beijing, 2008 uh, uh, Olympics. Yes. So there was a softball team, a national team, which was preparing to go to Zimbabwe for Olympic qualifier. So they didn't have anywhere to go. Mm. So they requested us to host them at uh, Irish Teachers College. I was the games teacher at Irish. Yes. So I welcomed them. I know I made sure that they were okay, okay in yeah. terms of food, in terms of facilities, and everything was good. So the chair of softball then called Frida Shiroya mm. thought I was a very good manager, mm. not the way I was taking care of the team. So yeah, she appointed me to be the team manager mm. to Zimbabwe. And that's how I got into softball. Yeah. So I, I got my first flight out of the country to Zimbabwe as a team manager of the softball national team mm. to Zimbabwe for Olympic qualifier. Yeah. So after that, we started moving with that to congresses. I went to Philippines, went to Oklahoma, mm -hmm. went to the Gambia, and all over the world. And all over the world mm. since then. Mm. You know, there's this specific aspect that at times... Mm. Um, most young people we mm. do miss. Mm. And, you know, the thing that opened this door for you mm. was uh, the simple fact that you worked diligently mm -hmm. in that moment that you hosted these people. Mm -hmm. And without, it's your actions that spoke to, mm, to, <laughs> the, to the president, mm -hmm. the chair. Mm -hmm. and, and she said, no, this guy must be a good TM mm -hmm. and I'd like to appoint. Mm -hmm. So, so what can you say about that in terms of uh, talking to the youth in regards to diligent working and all that? What well, I'll uh, tell them is when they are given an opportunity, they should do it to the best. Even if it's sweeping, let them sweep like nobody has ever swept before. Because you never know the doors which can open because of that literal thing. True. So whatever you're doing, do it to the best of your ability. Yes. And do it with passion. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, you never do. Probably that small element, somebody will notice and, uh, you know, like, up cap it, yeah, move you up to the highest level. Yeah. Mm. So mm. this is, I'm seeing the power of uh, sports, you know, on mm. how much it has uh, mm. transformed your life, how mm. much you've been mm. exposed, how mm. much you've traveled. Mm. If this happened to you, mm. how much limitations do you think we are giving to young people? in those counties that don't have facilities in mm. those, because I think the potential great players, mm. not of Kenya, but even of the world, yeah. that we are limiting. Of course, there is a lot of limitation, because yeah. I've seen in most of the sports, 
most players, apart from the major sports like soccer and probably athletics, they come in to interact with the balls at the age of uh, 17 or 18, like rugby. Most of the rugby players yeah. we are seeing at the moment, maybe they touch their first ball at uh, Form 1 level. Mm. In softball, most of them see the balls at university level. University. Yeah, you can imagine if they started at a younger level. But how would they start at a younger level? They can only do that if there are facilities down there. Yes. So that when they are growing up, they can see a softball ball. Mm. And that is what happens in the U.S. The U.S., most of those players are taken to the fields by their parents. Mm. So when the child is growing up, the, the parents buy for them a bat, they buy for them a glove, and, a mm. ball, and they take them every weekend to the fields. Yeah. But even if you wanted to do that in Kenya, where would you take them? To? Take them. Yeah. Even for soccer, they are struggling. Yeah. Because you can see them playing on very poor, you know, maintained grounds. Yeah. Mm. So that's where we need to go as Kenya. Yes. Mm. Um, so uh, briefly, if you can also share uh, just uh, the journey that softball has taken uh, from the early 90s to, to mm. late. So softball initially was introduced by PE teachers. PE teachers initially were being trained in the U.S., we didn't have uh, trainers for PE teachers in Kenya. So they would be taken to the U.S. So when they came back, of course, when they were in the U.S., they interacted with baseball and softball together with many other sports. Yeah. So as uh, out of fun, you know, we, they knew Kenya, there was no softball and baseball. But over the weekends, eh, because of the uh, knowledge which they had gotten in the U.S., they would meet and play some baseball and softball mm. just for fun. So later they thought probably they could register baseball and softball. So at that time they registered baseball and softball as one federation. Mm. So it was baseball and softball federation of Kenya. Yes. But uh, towards 1996, government there was a policy from government that mm. we should not have two sports, you know, being registered as one. Mm. So they were encouraged to separate so that we have baseball and softball. So Frida Shiroya took up softball, mm. and then there was Solomon Gacheche. Who, yeah. who took took over baseball. Mm. So in 1996, we had softball registered softball, separately as a softball foundation of Kenya, yeah. then baseball foundation of Kenya under the leadership of Solomon Gachet. Gachet. Mm. You you mentioned about at some point playing for, for the church. Um, how, how did the occasional visits and equipment donations from Christian baseball Mm -hmm. and uh, universities or federal missionaries from the United States help develop this sport in Kenya? Um, basically, yeah, initially, mm -hmm. of course, I said there's a lot of charge of equipment in Kenya. So where you'd get gloves and balls is from the U.S. So we had many volunteers, basically religious-based volunteers, mm -hmm. who would come to Kenya to minister through softball and baseball. So those were the people who are bringing equipment to us. Yeah. So every now and then we would find guys, those wazungus coming to Kenya with many gloves and balls. Mm. So, but of course they would just train some people and disappear. Mm. So when they come back, those people have already disappeared. Yeah. So that's the gap I was saying. They would yes. train some people basically to teach them values, Christian values yes. through softball mm -hmm. and baseball. Mm. Then after they are gone, there's no follow up mm. until when another group Comes, yes. comes. Yeah. So that was a big gap. That was a big gap. Mm. Yeah. Uh, there's NYS. NYS also was uh, uh, on the foundational levels of softball pre uh, creation of softball. So, in so initially, the the teams which started playing was National Youth Service. National Youth Service, I think, was uh, taught by uh, Peace Corps. Mm. Yeah, the Peace Corps, not the not the Christian based guys, Peace Corps. Mm. So there were two or three went to NYS. Being an institution, it was very easy to introduce the game. Yeah. Then there was a, a one team from Makongeni called mm -hmm. Makongeni Softball Club. Yeah. So basically those were the two clubs which were playing softball at that time. I think also Utali also took up the sport because of his proximity from NYS. Because mm. Utali is just across from National Youth Service. So those were the initial clubs which mm. played softball in Kenya. Then in um, later years, 2008, eh, yes. I moved to Nazarene. Mm -hmm. oh, oh, before I moved to Nazarene and introduced softball in, uh, uh, in the colleges, Irish and other colleges, yeah. I think Dogoto and others. 
because soft was part of the curriculum. Mm. From my age, I moved to Nairobi school. I started soft but there. But it was very difficult to penetrate secondary schools because there are many. And many, the structure yeah. is already there. <laughs> the structure of sports is already there. Yes. So penetrating the secondary schools was difficult because of basically lack of equipment. Mm. So then I moved to Nazarene in 2008. Yeah. That's where I started a very strong team there. At that time, I realized um, Jake Wett was playing some form of uh, baseball, mm -hmm. not soft or baseball. baseball. Then there was KU, where people were going to introduce the game, then they disappear. So the game is not picked up. So we thought probably we could start a league in Kenya. Yeah. At that time, what was being played was occasional tournaments. There was a Cherry Adidas Cup, which was coming around March. Then there was a national championship which was coming towards the end of the year. So I thought probably for this game to grow, we need to start a league. Yeah. So we started the league in uh, 2009. That time, there were only three teams. There was J. Kuat, Nazarene, and KU. Mm. At the moment, we have about 12 teams. 12 teams. Yeah. yeah. So after we started, the other teams started coming up. Mm -hmm. So basically, our idea was to start in the universities. Why universities? because the universities have the infrastructure. One, they have the youth, mm -hmm. a lot of players within. Then they have the fields. Most of the universities have the fields. Then they have the transport. Yeah. So if we tell them we want to go for a league in Jaikwad, we want to go for a league in Mombasa, they have the muscle, uh, yes. they have the transport. So it was very easy to penetrate the universities. And yes. of course, I was working the, the university. university. The university. So we penetrated the university. At the moment, we have about 12 universities playing softball. And I've not stopped yet. Uh, Still going on. Yeah. In the yeah. next two weeks, I'll, I'll be going to Machakos to introduce. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, two months ago, I was in Karatina. Then I went to Kerenyaga University, Chuka, mm -hmm. Mary University. Mm -hmm. So I am still in my journey. I will not stop until when all the universities in Kenya are playing Next softball. Up. Yes, and I can imagine how competitive it will be. <laughs> yeah, at the moment it's still very competitive. Yes, yes. At the moment, you, Nazarene cannot win, and they are the ones who started the game. Even Jaquat, Jaquat won the first, I think, ten years continuously, mm -hmm. unbeaten. Yeah. At the moment, I don't think Jaquat can beat any team. <laughs> mm -hmm. yes. So along the way, yes. several self-sponsored clubs started coming yeah. up. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So at the moment we have records, which is, um, you know, it's made up of students who finished universities. Eh? You know, after they finish their course, move out there and they still want to continue with their passion of softball. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So they come together and start clubs. So we have records, basically uh, former players of Kenyatta University mm -hmm. and a few from JQuart. Then we have uh, Infanos. Infanos are former players of Technical University of Mombasa. We've gone all the way to Mombasa. So we have a self-sponsored clubs coming up. Yeah. That is positive. So 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 mm -hmm. to a layman maybe who doesn't understand mm -hmm. uh briefly how the league runs mm -hmm. and how points are awarded. You know football, we know how the points are awarded. So, so if you can just in, initially when we started the league, we had the idea of um uh, uh, Premier League soccer. Mm -hmm. you know where they play every weekend home and away. Yes, but we realized that is very difficult for Kenya, for softball at that moment. Because uh, moving to JQuart with the jam and all that, yeah. playing one game and coming back, it was not very satisfying. So we adopted the system of rugby, uh, where we play a series, we meet one weekend, uh, we play a whole series, all the teams meet or whichever system we use. Yeah. Then we have uh, winners, we have trophies being awarded to the winners. Yeah. That was very exciting for the players. So that when a team does not have money to travel, mm. they can select the series they want to attend. Yeah. So we picked a series in uh, Dekut, a series in uh, Jaquet, a series in KU, a series in um, University of Enderet. We have University of Enderet. Yes. Then we picked a series in uh, Nazarene. Initially, we had a series in Nazarene. Then we finished with a series in uh, Technical University of Mombasa. Mm. So for every series, if we have seven teams, the top team, get seven points and yeah, graduating down all the way to one to one so if you attend all the series we usually have seven series mm -hmm. you attend all the seven series and you are number one mm -hmm. is seven times seven points but if you if you miss one in between then you your points you don't get that high the, the help points. points yeah, yeah. so that's the way it says the system and we copied the system of rugby mm -hmm. 
Yeah, because of uh, the nature of our university, they are scattered all over. Yes, yes. So you can imagine bringing Technical University of Mombasa to KU to play only one match. Yeah. That is not very interesting. They would rather come over the weekend and play like 10 or so matches. Yeah. That is more, we are value for their money. Value Instead for of them. coming all the way and play for only wow. play only one match and go. When they come for one weekend, KU series, they play 10 matches, get a trophy and go back home. That's value for their money. for their money. Yeah. Yeah. So the most interesting series is usually the coast, Mbutum, Technical University of Mombasa series, uh -huh. the last one. Yeah. Because that's there we are won the winner of the series and the overall winner. Overall winner. Yeah, some of the trophies for overall winners at least. Yes, yes. So this was overall series for season 2021. It was won by Multimedia University. Uh -huh. It's quite interesting. Yeah. Yeah. So 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 um mm. moving into the national teams mm. you know how how proud are you uh, of the Kenya national women's softball team mm. and their representation in international competitions such as they were in the Africa Olympic qualifier mm. they were in the world women's softball championships what what are some of your memorable moments for that, that generally team? softball in the world is mm. more of a it has more support within the women circles. At the oh, softball is an Olympic sport, and in at the Olympics, uh, softball is there as a women's sport, and then baseball comes in as a you know the male sport. Yeah. So we the two sports are run at the top at, uh, at the top level by World Baseball and Softball Confederation, mm -hmm. World Baseball, which we call WBSC. WBSC w came up in the year, is it 2011? The reason why it came up was uh, in after 2008, softball was removed from the Olympics. Mm. And uh, we needed a push to bring the sport back to the Olympics. Mm. There is a lot of honor in having a sport in the Olympics. Yes. So yes. initially softball was there, but after 2008 Olympics, it was removed. Mm -hmm. Baseball, by, by then, had not been into the Olympics. Yeah. So baseball won. Baseball is a very strong sport in the uh, US and Europe and Asia. Mm. So they wanted to go to the Olympics. But they were told by International Olympic Committee that you can only go into the Olympics, one, if you play in all the continents, if the, the game is played in all the continents, and two, mm. if it's played by both men and women. Mm. So now they decided to pick up the sister game, softball, which is mm. very closely related, so that it can come in as a women's sport. Yes. And um, baseball is a male sport. sport. So that's why there was a manager. Mm -hmm. Initially, softball was managed by International Softball Federation. And then baseball was in, managed by International Baseball Federation. Mm -hmm. So the two merged. They merged, I think, in 2014 in a congress in Tunisia. Mm -hmm. So after the merger, now we came up with WBS, which uh, manages the two sports. Mm -hmm. So that now the two sports can be mm -hmm. brought back into the Olympics. Yes. So the moment softball is in the Olympics as a women's sport, mm -hmm. baseball is a male sport and a WBSP, mm -hmm. WBSC. So coming back to national teams, so in 2005, we had the softball national team in preparation for 2008 Olympics. Yes, yes. That's where we went to South Africa. There we met Zimbabwe, we met South Africa. Mm -hmm. I think with the three countries. There we were, it was. We didn't have a lot of experience. Yes. So we were beaten thoroughly by South Africa and Zimbabwe. Mm -hmm. So we finished that. Yeah. Yeah. After that, the next trip we went was in Canada for World Championship in 2016. Yes. So there we were also not very lucky because we didn't have a lot of experience. But we came up with a, we came with a lot of uh, you know experiences. Mm -hmm. So we didn't perform very well, but we came home with a lot of experience. Yes. And uh, you can see the photo over there. Yeah. Yeah, that is the team which won there. In 20, that is the team which went in uh, to Canada in 2016. Uh -huh. Yeah. Most of them at the moment have left softball to other careers, but yeah. there's still one person there who is still there, Susan over here. Yes. Yeah, she is still playing softball and doing very well. Mm -hmm. Currently, she is a uh, national team coach of baseball five team mm -hmm. baseball five team is a uh, another version of uh baseball a street version she's now the best in africa best coach in africa best coach in africa. yeah all the others have left for one reason or the or the other 
Yeah. The turnover for ladies is usually very high. Yeah. They get married. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Maybe their husbands refuse, you know, to for them to play. Uh, they tell them you cannot play. Kwa kwa nyumba yangu Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. For those are minute. So after that, that 2016, mm-hmm. the next time the team came together was when we were going to Botswana. Yeah. That was for World Cup qualifiers. Mm-hmm. We there we met, um, the, of course, there was Kenya, there was Lesotho, there was Botswana, and there was South Africa. We did our best and uh, we managed to be number three. Mm-hmm. So at the moment, the softball national team for the ladies is ranked that in the world. I think it's number 48 or something in the world. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That in Africa, the fourth in West Indies. Indies. Yeah. Well, so we yes. have a lot of work to do. Work to do. Yeah. The the highest ranked uh, team in Africa, I think, is South Africa or Botswana. Mm-hmm. Could be number 15, 16, or something mm-hmm. like that. Yeah. So Africa, in terms of softball, we are still low. Mm-hmm. So we need to work very hard. We need to work very hard. Of course, the and challenges are obvious because mm-hmm. facilities are very poor. Yeah. Yeah. And then, of course, we start touching gloves and balls at the uh, adverse stage, yes. maybe at 17 or 18. Mm-hmm. In Kenya, they start playing at the university. So it's very difficult to compete with the rest of the world. Yeah. In the US, I told you they start when they are young, mm-hmm. under five. Under five. How do you compete with <laughs> those kind of kids who start under five? Uh, yeah, yeah, they started uh, playing under at under five, and you are touching that bat at eighteen or twenty. Yes. You can in skill wise, you cannot reach that level. Thanks. You know, thanks. Thanks to the hard work you guys have mm-hmm. done. Mm-hmm. At least at the softball celebrations, you were able to see the young boys. Mm-hmm. So there is hope. We are we are moving towards the right direction. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, there were kids there, but now the problem is they play in only one school and they don't have continuous activity. Which mm. baseball could create a league mm. whereby those kids are playing every weekend. Mm. But they only come during a championship and then they disappear. they disappear. So the next time they play is after like six or seven months. So yeah. if there was a continuous league, uh, yeah, like we do it in softball in the universities, that would be better. Mm, that would be better. Yeah, and then the other problem is that when they go to secondary schools, the schools they go to, they mm. don't have baseball, they don't have softball. True. So they kind of forget the skills they were taught when they were young. Yeah. Mm. So you mentioned baseball five. Mm. How 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 was the introduction of baseball five in 2018, and mm. uh, what role did the softball teams in Nairobi play in this initial adoption? So. Uh, over time, World Baseball and Softball Confederation realized that it's very hard to penetrate with the softball because of softball and baseball because of the very expensive equipment. Facilities are also very expensive. Mm-hmm. You can imagine in Kenya, we do not have a standard facility. In fact, the whole of East Africa, we don't have a standard facility of baseball or softball. Yeah. The closest uh, standard softball field, up, I think, is in is Botswana and South Africa. So the whole of East Africa, we don't have a standard pitch. The whole of uh, North Africa, we don't have a field. Mm-hmm. In sports houses in Kenya, as I said, we don't have a standard equipment. So it was it's very difficult to penetrate in most parts of the world because of scarcity of equipment. And when they are there, they are very expensive. Then no facilities. So they decided to come up with a, a, a smaller version of the game, which is very easy to play and which can be played on the streets, which can be played everywhere. Mm. So that's when they came up with a baseball five. Baseball five is a combination of both rules of softball and baseball. Mm-hmm. Basically, to play baseball five, you only need a ball, this ball only. You only need this ball to play baseball five. Mm-hmm. For softball, you need gloves, you need bats, you need helmets, mm-hmm. very complicated and very expensive equipment. Mm-hmm. And you need a space, a huge space. For baseball, you need a space of uh, about 80 meters, mm. longer than the normal uh, soccer field or rugby field. Mm. Baseball 5, you only need 13 meters, space of 13 meters. And that's it. Then you don't need a bat, you need the hand only. You only need to hit this ball and run. Mm. So the rules are basically like baseball and softball, but now played on a smaller space. Mm. So to play this game, you need half of a basketball field. Mm-hmm. You are good to go. And they're good to go. So it's called a street game, and uh, the slogan is play everywhere. Yeah. Yeah. So this is very easy to spread. In fact, if you, even if you don't have this ball, you can use a tennis ball. Yes. Or you can improvise a ball. Improvise so a this ball. is very easy to penetrate schools. Mm. So this is a, the way to go for Africa. 
So my dream is to spread this game to the whole of Kenya, actually Africa, yeah. using baseball fire. Because you only need this ball or a tennis ball. I want a tennis ball. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know the ones which are thrown away, the ones which are black. Yes, yes. Yeah. Th that, those are the balls you need. Mm -hmm. You don't need this one. Because it's a standard ball. So maybe in the championships, we can have the standard ball. But for spreading the game, we tell them to improvise, use anything. So no helmet, no glove, no bat, no nothing. You only need to hit that ball. In Africa, of course, we are gifted with power. Power. Wow. I'm a cooler cabeza. <laughs> so hitting the ball is not a difficult thing. Mm. So it was introduced in um, 2017. It was brought to Kenya in 2018. Then in 2019, we started a league. At the moment, we usually have it as at the first championship, the first series, when we are starting off the, our leagues. Yeah. Every, we usually start our league in September. Mm -hmm. So before we start our league, we, we have a championship of baseball five. Yeah. So then, uh, uh, last year, 20, 20, is it? Last year, yes, there was an Africa qualifier from baseball five, the first ever baseball five World Cup. Yes. So we went to Dar es Salaam, yes. Tanzania. Yeah. Yeah, we met how many countries? About 10 of them. Mm -hmm. We yeah, we had um, Burkina Faso, we had Tanzania, we had South Africa, we had Tunisia and many other teams. So in that championship, we emerged number two. Mm -hmm. In fact, we would have won that championship. It's only that one of our players got injured mm -hmm. during the final. Mm -hmm. So we, we emerged number two in Africa. Then we went to Mexico for the World Cup. Mm -hmm. There we beat major teams like Korea, France. You no know, powerhouses in baseball. in baseball. Yeah, and we emerged number eight in the world. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that is quite significant. That's so at the moment, our ranking is number eight in the world. Yes. That's why I'm telling you it's easier to penetrate here. Mm -hmm. And uh, our ranking in baseball and softball is 50 something in the world. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, so this is easier to penetrate. Yeah. Yeah, I, I even recall the mm -hmm. way you said, you know, uh, for the softballs, you had African championships 14th. Yeah. But now this one, you have yeah. 10. We have 10. <laughs> then uh, yeah. Yeah, a couple of months ago, we had the youth championship in uh, Accra, Ghana. Mm -hmm. And we had over 15 countries participating. Because wow. nice. now baseball five is played by only five players. Mm -hmm. Regular softball is played by nine. nine. Maximum of 15. Mm -hmm. So in a baseball five team, you only need... Eight players, eight players, four ladies and four men. Mm. So even now, you know, moving the team is very easy. Mm. Yeah, it's very cheap. Very so cheap. it can, in fact, baseball five is to me was made for Africa. Mm. Other than developed ones, some of the developed ones have refused to take up as baseball five mm. because to them they don't see it as very interesting. Like yeah. US has not taken up baseball five yet. Mm. To them, they want to stick with softball and baseball. baseball. But for us, the way to go, for Africa actually, the way to go is baseball five. Baseball five. Yeah. Because the best, the highest ranked team in baseball five is at Tunisia, seventh in, seventh in the world. Mm -hmm. And uh, in, the, in the world actually, so Tunisia is not there for baseball and softball. Mm -hmm. But in baseball five, is seventh in the world. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So our, the way to go for Africa is baseball five. Yeah, it will take us a very yeah. long time to move into top ten in baseball and softball. Yeah. Mm. So I, 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 as a secretary general of WBSC Africa, yes. I'm encouraging all the African countries to take up baseball five. Yeah. Of course, we shall continue playing softball and baseball, but mm. the truth be told, it will take us many years, mm. maybe fifty or so years before we move to the level of the US. And we can only move to that level where our facilities have improved. Yeah. And you know improvement of facilities is political because it's very it expensive. Is. It is. Uh, you can see like um, in Kenya, our facility like Kasaradi and Inyayo, they are not yet the standard of uh, soccer. Mm -hmm. They can, still cannot, uh, you know, host international yeah. sports. Yeah. So that is soccer. Uh, when will they come to softball? Hockey is very good, well developed in Kenya. They still don't have a very standard field. Yeah. Yeah, look at volleyball. Rugby. Very developed in Kenya and still don't have a standard field. Yeah. Rugby was being played, uh, is now being played. I think there is youth championship and they are playing on a soccer pitch in yeah, Australia. Mm. So it will take a while for them to think about softball. Yeah. That's why I'm talking about next 50 years or so. But for baseball five, you only need a, a basketball field and you are good to do. Even at the international level, they just use a normal space, mm. basketball field space. 
yeah. Bas- basketball fields and we are good to go uh, yeah I think we need to <laughs> we need to have a tournament usually in Nairobi where people skate yeah so, in between you so, we can have a street league or a street tournament there and just ne- next the people come yeah, and in the next two weeks or so yes. we are going to float bids for a senior baseball five qualifiers so the World Cup was last year. The next World Cup will be in 2024. Yes. So the uh, qualifiers are beginning now. Mm. So n- in the next two or so weeks, we are going to float bids for. And we are thinking of, uh, you know, uh, you know, bidding as Kenya. Yes. And if we bid, we are thinking of hosting it. Where you are talking about yes. that space there, because yeah. it's a street game, it so that everybody passing there can see something. Mm. Unique being played, and then they get interested. Yes. Yeah, it's just, that's our idea. Yes. Yeah. Thank yeah. you for picking up our idea. I think you, you're welcome. Yeah, yeah. You're yeah. welcome. That's what we were supposed to mm. about. Yeah. So, street. And the best space in Nairobi, I think, is that area where they do skating. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. But I uh, shall see how things go. Yes. Mm. So, viewers, you've heard it from the president himself. You need to take up this game. Uh, make it so hard for them to choose the national team <laughs> mm. uh, by coming to participate. All you need is a ball. All you need is a tennis ball. If you can't get this bez, uh, uh, baseball five ball and uh, 13 meters of, of of space. Yeah, 13 meters by 13 meters. Half of a basketball. Half yeah. of a basketball field. Mm. And uh, just go and read the rules, check them out and uh, start participating and encourage to participate in your schools and uh, wherever. And uh, as we go ahead, uh, what are the future plans or initiatives of Softball Federation of Kenya yeah. or Baseball 5? Yeah, for Baseball 5, at the moment, we've started a league for Nairobi-based teams. Mm-hmm. There is a league. The reason why we started the league is because between May and August, usually our, our league starts, our Softball League starts in May, in September, and ends in March. After that, there is a break between May and August. Yes. So within that space, we decided to start some baseball, baseball five league. Yes. And this is ongoing at the moment. Mm. We have about six teams which are participating, mm. which they usually meet, use the same method of series, and they meet here at the Multimedia University. Yeah. Yeah. So after every now and then, maybe two, three weeks, they meet, play, around dropping. Mm. And we are within all the teams, and then the winner, get some cash award and some points. And some so points. at the end of the series, mm. the winner will be awarded as a winner of the series. Mm. Yeah, but every series has a winner. So if a team is not able to attend all the uh, series, they will come to that series, play, and uh, win. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, participate, come again when they love the resources. Yes. So that's the first. This year is the first one. First. It's the first time we are having the, the Baseball 5 League. Mm-hmm. The reason why we are doing that is so that we can keep, you know, players of baseball five, you know, playing continuously. Playing continuously. So that as we select the national team for the seniors, it will be very easy. The moment selecting the men for baseball five will be very difficult mm. because they are now very good. Yeah, everyone very good. is improving. Yeah, everybody is improving. And you know, you need only four in yeah. Kenya, only four, only players. four players. And we have so many players of a hundred men playing. Mm. Yeah. For the ladies that we have, we have a challenge. We need them to hit the ball harder. Cuba is the best team, ranked team in Baseball 5. Mm-hmm. Baseball 5 started in Cuba. Yes. And their ladies hit the ball very hard. In fact, they hit the ball harder than our men here. What? So we need the ladies, our ladies here to hit the ball harder. Uh-huh. Yeah. So that, when we, so that we can move to the level of Cuba. Cuba. Yeah. Mm. Mm. And we are not so far. We are, we are we getting there. We are getting there. For the men, we are almost there, but we want to encourage our ladies to hit that ball hard. Yes. I don't know whether they need to go to the gym, develop their muscles, yes. so that they can hit that ball hard. Oh, so true. that in the next qualifier, mm. at the moment we are not assured that we shall get that number two. At the moment, competition is too tough. Yeah, Ghana is coming up. Mm-hmm. Ghana the one who won the youth uh, championship, which was held in May yes. this year, yes. is coming up. Zambia is coming up very strongly. Mm-hmm. Of course, we have our number one team, uh, South Africa and Tunisia. Yes. So it will not be very easy What's for us be? this time. Yeah. We have to work very hard. Okay. So that's why we started that league, so mm-hmm. that we can keep the players you know, playing continuously. Yeah. 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 Of, of course, there is some resistance from some players. 
they don't it's, it's just like basketball mm. basketball i know has moved to three on three yeah some players are still resisting they think three on three is not the actual basketball yeah, yes. yeah they want to play the <laughs> usual basketball. basketball there's also resistance in rugby mm. some um traditionalists in rugby they say sevens rugby sevens is not a good game 15 they want the 15s <laughs> so in softball it's still the same yeah if they don't want to play baseball five they said we want to see the real thing using yeah. gloves and bat yes not hitting the <laughs> not ball with the heart with the heart so we, that, but we shall continue anyway yeah. they'll yeah. catch up with us they'll catch up Ukombele as we continue yes mm. so mr francis as we as we wrap it up mm. um i'd like you to talk into this camera and mm. just encourage mm. a young man mm. somewhere who mm. loves sports mm. who's uh probably things are not so easy for him at the moment mm. or her uh, but mostly, you know, my boys, the men, boy child, excuse me, actually was sana. Yeah. So I just like you to encourage that person. For for sports, for the young people, I want to talk to two groups. One is the parents. As a parents, you need to assist your kids to develop their skills. How do you do that? One by buying them the equipment. Two by taking them to the venues or probably even employing coaches for them. You know, that kind of thing. Hire, hire coaches for them, buy them the equipment, take them to the venues. Then the kids, you know, go to where the sports are being played. If you see a place where the kids are playing, go and play, and then tell your parents to buy you the equipment. If it's soccer, for example, ask your parents to buy you soccer boots. Ask your parents to buy you a soccer ball. And then ask them to take you to the venues. Yeah, and it, that way you'll get good coaches there and they'll try to sharpen your skills as you go along. When you go to the schools, not just stay in class, just reading books. Go to the field there. Play. At the young age, it's good to play all sports. Play soccer, play hockey, play all sports. Then along the line, you'll discover where you're talented in. Yeah. Yeah, and then you continue that to probably... You never know. Maybe you 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 be the best in the next professional. You can even try something like golf. Like today, I was trying golf, and I think I was good at it. I wish I had tried earlier when I was younger. Yeah, yeah you never know. Probably I would be like Tiger Wood at the moment. Yes. So try all sports. You never know. God has given you a talent, probably in soccer, probably in hockey. But you can never know that until when you go and try it out. So I so instead of reading books only in class, try out a sport. And you know sports these days is paying. Mm. Yeah. Look at somebody like who give me an example of somebody who is earning a live in sports. Uh in Kenya? Or in, in the world, even the world. world. Yeah. Lionel Messi. Yeah, in Kenya. Like this lady, even this lady who came up of tennis the other day. Oh, Nani. Yeah. Um Oku Okutoi. 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 Yeah. Yes. Yeah, they're earning a lot of money through sports. And maybe Okutoi could not have known that she is good in tennis until when somebody, I think is the uncle or somebody, who yeah. took her to the tennis field. So mm. try, maybe she had tried other sports before. So for the young people, try as many sports of, as possible so that along the line you discover where you are talented in. For the parents, support your kids. If you see your kids, you know, attempting to play basketball, support them. Support them by buying them the ball, taking them to the venues. You know, engaging coaches for them, yeah. and that way God will bless you, and you'll be happy as you your, see your kid moving higher and higher yeah. in that particular yeah. sport. Mm. On to the quick fire segment. Mm. Your best sports documentary. Uh, what do you mean by best sports? Any documentary? any film documentary like you know the the the, the, the best could be probably uh, the latest one which you did at Jackwood. Uh-huh. The, one, the one you did at Jake was sports really good. Yes, Thank you. Sports Celebration. <laughs> that was a quite a nice one. I loved it. Thank mm-hmm. you. Mm-hmm. Thank you. Your best sports athlete? Best sports athlete? The one yeah. you love. In Kenya, probably Rudisha. Rudisha. Yeah, I know he's not running at the moment, uh-huh. I, but I like the way he was running. Yeah. The other one could be Kayandi of rugby. Humphrey, yes. Yeah, then in, uh, I have so many. Maybe for volleyball, I have Janet Wanja. Yes. The booster. Uh-huh. In the soccer, 
Probably Dennis Oliech. Dennis Oliech. I know he is not playing at the yes. moment, but he was quite good. Uh -huh. Yeah. And uh, your best sports recovery equipment or process of recovery? What do you mean by process of recovery? Like maybe if uh, you've uh, gone through rigorous training, mm. how do you recover? You can sleep, you can do ice baths. You yeah, know, yeah, how yeah. Much? yeah, the yeah. the best uh, to me is swimming. Swimming? Yeah. Yes. Although yeah, I know sometimes in cold weather, mm. not very easy to yeah warm down in yes. the water. Yes. But... Uh, that would be the best in me. Yeah, yeah. I mean, for me. Mm, mm, yeah. yeah. Indeed, uh, we appreciate you, sir, for mm. your time. Mm. We appreciate you for the support you've uh, done uh, for this country in regards to softball and baseball. Mm. It's not an easy task bringing or handling a new baby. Mm. <laughs> but so far, you've tried so much and uh, you've made it this far. And uh, if, even as we wrap it up, uh, he mentioned a documentary, Softball Celebrations, and we were at uh, the Nairobi Field of Dreams. If if you'd like to talk a little bit about that, maybe, on uh, what was happening there. We, as I said, we have a big challenge of uh, facilities in Kenya, in the whole of Africa. Yes. So there is this group of uh, Americans who have come up with a company called If We Build It. Yes. If We Build It is a big company in the U.S., Yes. And their main job is to build facilities. And their slogan is that if you build it, they will come. They will yes. come and play on it. So they decided to come up with a Kenya chapter of uh, if you build it. And the, their first project was to build a, a field at JQuet. Yes. Of course, JQuet, because they have a lot of baseball, they have a lot of softball. So the uh, university will come to them. The uh, engineering department decided to partner with them in construction of a Softball field. In Nairobi, you don't have a facility, a softball and baseball facility. Mm -hmm. So they are welcome there. They are constructing that facility. It's not yet done. They are in Kuataway. So they are still in the journey of constructing that field. Yes. When they complete it, I'm encouraging them to build another one at Multimedia University so that we have a facility at the northern side and a facility on the southern side. Maybe we have another one in the east of Nairobi and uh, the west of Nairobi, uh, so that the people in the south, the people in Rongai, and they don't have to go all the way to Jaykwet. They play within within MMU. The ones of KU and Jaykwet, they will be playing at the year. So then after that, they move to other uh, sections of Kenya. They go to Mombasa, they go to Meru, go to western side. After they are through with Kenya, they go to Tanzania, go to Rwanda, and the rest of Africa. Yeah. So that is the dream. Is yeah. Dream. If we build it, that is a dream. They build facilities all over Africa. Mm. And they say if you build it, they will come and will play. Come. Yeah, yes. that is it. So we are encouraging. The directors at the moment is uh, Thomas and Kevin. Mm -hmm. They are doing a fantastic job. Yeah. So we are praying that people will support them so that their dream can be achieved. It's not very easy to construct facilities. Yes. Facilities are very expensive. Yeah, very expensive. Yeah. And we are encouraging them to, you know, people to donate so that they can build facilities for, for Kenya. Okay. So that uh, they are keen to a talent and they can have facilities to training. Yes, yes. Probably, in, who knows, in the next 50 or so years, we can win the Softball World Cup. Yes. Yeah. Cup yeah. Soon. One step at a time. One step at a time. Yeah. Yeah. How do you eat an elephant? If somebody gives you an elephant, tells you this is your dinner, you cannot complete it. Yes. But there is a strategy. <laughs> If you take one bite at a time yeah. and keep on eating, probably you can finish it. You can. Yeah. <laughs> so, I yeah. Like that. yeah. A I journey like of a thousand miles starts with a single step. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So we know it's not very easy to construct facilities in the whole of Kenya, but the way if you build it, Thomas and Kevin have started mm. doing something small. Yeah. So slowly by slowly we shall get there. We shall get yeah. there. Yeah. Indeed, viewers, uh, was a great honor having you. Uh, it was a great honor having you as well, Mr. Mm. Karugu. Yeah. God bless you so much. Yeah. And God viewers, bless you too. as we said, you know, as Mr. Karugu has said, a journey of a thousand miles starts with a step. And we are starting with a step here at Sports Develop uh, at Wima Sports, where we are championing sports development. And the step continues. It never stops. We keep moving forward. We keep championing sports development. We keep telling those stories that champion sports development. Until next time, viewers, it's your host here at Wima Sports. Salute.